Bilzerian calls me at 10, 10 in the morning. I'll never forget it. Where are you? He tells me to look on the news. Can you tell me what's the easiest way to make a million dollars? I don't recommend being an entrepreneur. <laughs> I know it's wrong too, but I literally, I get annoyed when a homeless person has a cell phone. You know why he invited me there? To train 11 sheriffs how to wow. play poker and blackjack for the rest of the afternoon. So he used the meeting not to help you, but to help himself. If I hand you 20 racks and you're like, where are you, where are you gonna shove it? Mathematically, Bitcoin can and will win, theoretically. Boom. I'm not saying your name yet, but you, to me, are par part of like this crazy original Mount Rushmore of like people we had to follow. Like when Instagram was innocent. Like it was like the fat Jew, Jerry, the Dan Bilzerian, the Dan Fleischman. Dan Fleischman's in the building. Let's Dude, go. you're a legend. You work. Okay, so I asked this before we even started recording because I just didn't want to fuck it up. I'm like, are you from San Diego? No. You're not? No. B because when I thought you were for a second, and I'm like, this guy works way too hard to be from the West Coast. Born in Riga, Latvia. And I always say, if you throw someone in the pool, they have to swim or die. For me, it's like, if I don't make money, I'm going to die. And it's not that I need the money. I need the air. I need the game. I need that action. And growing up with no money and a Russian family that, you know, instills work ethic in you, it's, as you know, it's, the it's, immigrant it's embedded life. in you. Yeah, I feel yes. like you have a bigger burden as an immigrant than uh, a natural born citizen to not let your family down. Yes. Right. Because you're like, they did all this to get me here. Like, I can't be the guy at part of that, you know, relay race that just goes, eh, whatever. That messes everything up. Yeah. Right. So I feel like maybe that pressure helps. I still have it today. Right. 40 years later, I still have Are it. your parents still alive? Uh, my dad's not. Is your mom? Yeah. Do you fucking spoil the shit out of her? She's the only human I talk to at least once a day. Ever in history. That's that's pretty much me as well. Yeah. And my girl. I just have one main role. I have to text her when I get on a plane and when I land. And I'm on a plane five days a week, so. Right. That's, You're that's texting every enjoy. day. Uh -huh. You fly a lot, huh? Yeah. Do you thinking, enjoy it? I still enjoy the game right now, yes. I mean, you fly a ton. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, flying, uh, I love hotel rooms. Like, I love the concept of hotel room because it's like the only time I'm trapped with my own shame and no one can judge me. Everything that happens in a hotel room <laughs> is all my shames, right? Everything I eat. I watch more porn in a hotel room than I do anywhere else. And that's like, like six times a day, I might be, you know, blasting going to, one off. <laughs> going to town. And that's the only time I try to shave my body, any part of my body. Because I'm like, yo, not my cleanup. Right. Right. So there's a lot happening. Yeah, because you could I, be so as I, enjoy as the, I think I enjoy the game mainly just so I can groom myself, right? I get it all my fucking... <laughs> and you don't have to like worry cleanse. about anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just leave a 20 and you're like, thank yeah. you. Like, no one had to witness this. By the way, not enough people say that. You can't actually tip your maids. Like, leaving a 20, I've asked people hundreds of times and nobody does it. Not too many people do. I smoke yeah. weed in the room, so I'm like, dude, I know she ain't... Cousin. And I've never got a cleaning charge. And I'm like, I leave a 20... They just go. It's also that. an immigrant thing. I feel like we like to tip because we yes. we like we understand what it feels like to get taken care of, for and sure. we want to take care of people back. For some reason, Americans are not on the same page. Think about how big that. that how big a twenty is. Like, right? It's a big deal. Yeah, it's two or three hours of gross income after taxes. Like, yeah. Even if she makes fifteen bucks an hour, it's still three hours. Yeah, nice. 20. Dude, it's lunch. Even if you're like shit, I don't have to spend that money. <laughs> right. Tw extra 20 bucks is, goes does, a long does way. Does it bother you when somebody who's working for you is older than you? No. That, like, well, not like working for you, but like doing a job that you're like, ah, like, I wish you weren't doing this job, right? Like when like an old Asian guy is delivering your Chinese food in the rain in New York, you're like, I got to tip more. Like, I feel bad that a man 30 years older than me has to do this fucking shitty job. When they're young, I don't give a fuck about it. I'm like, dude, that's just part of the come up, right? But when you're old, I'm like, ah, man, that sucks. You're doing this. Yeah. I tip more then. Tipping is a big thing. I, you know, I'm, I've am i worked in the service industry my whole life. I have a barbershop in New York, so. People tip? You have to. And if you don't, it's just kind of like. What are you going to do? Give them a worse haircut? No, you don't. You, just how like clients can fire the barber, you got to fire the client sometimes. You know what I mean? Oh, you just don't bring them back. You just, you're just like, listen, I got no time. Yeah. But why do like, I got to tip you if I'm being paying you for a service that you're like, that's your only service. You didn't do anything extra for me. You did the job. Well, I am doing something. You made extra. my, yeah, you, no, you didn't. You I'm cut my hair. I'm performing a service. You cut my hair. 
correct. But I have right. to do a good job. I have to try really hard, right? That, that, that's, to make it look good every time. No, that's part of your job. To, well, I'm not a robot. I can't, I can't consistently give you the same so haircut. So I need to incentivize you with more money so that you work harder. <laughs> well, mo that's so why. So should all jobs be tipped? Wow, that's a good question. Right? So where does it stop? Fine. Tip your barber because you went above and beyond. Well, people get bonuses, right? That's tip. That's not a tip. Yes, it is. No, that's it's not a form of tip. What do you think? A bonus is a form of a tip. Yes. But it's... It comes from the company, not from the customer. Regardless, but they're making the money okay. from the customer. Do you tip at the cash register when they're checking you out? But they're not performing anything. They're literally per doing well, a job. Well, now the robots are asking for tips too. Right. That's what I'm asking. Where does tip... Where does tip I'm, I don't know how I feel about tip culture. There's times I get infuriated and there's time I'm... I'm like generous, right? Well, most countries, you're not supposed to tip. It's rude. Yeah. They'll chase you down and give it back to you because it's rude. It's yeah. almost condescending in some places. To them, it's like you're pitying them. Mm -hmm. Almost. I'm like, know? I'm just buying you right now <laughs> so that you let me get away with what I need to get away with. <laughs> yeah, tipping is uh I'm paying for the focus. Yeah, I want, right. I want you to bring the water, bring the snacks, clear the tray like I want the thing. Correct. I'm in exactly. a casino. I'm gambling. I order a drink when she comes by. I give her a big tip and I go, I'm the first and last right. stop for you right. every time. Right. Boom. I'm buying Major, extra hospitality. Good question. Have you ever tipped at the beginning of a meal? Yes. I haven't no, done, I haven't I've done never enough, done but I want to. I tip at the top that. of every bar tab. So A, I yeah. get attention all night. For sure. And then I know the drinks are going to start getting caught yeah. fast. Yeah. I literally go, here's your has first it, hundred. Has, has anybody ever disappointed you? Yes. The for, worst is when you leave a tip and they don't realize it. Or they grab it and yeah. you're like, my man, I left you a $300 tip and you just threw it in a bucket. Or the other guy grabs it right. and you're like, no. how do I take it back? Wow, that's, that's so bad. That's the worst. Yes. I tip, sure. I'm a selfish tipper. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm tipping to take care I of you, make but sure also yeah, yes. yeah. take care of me. Yes, absolutely. It's a two-way street. I want them to see that I tip them. Dude, when they don't acknowledge yeah. a t good tip, that's when I go like yeah. fully, <laughs> but I that's, hope you die. But that's why I think it's risky to tip ahead of the service. Yeah. It is. It's a, you're gam all, you're gambling. All, yeah. yeah, it's a gamble because I think it's I think it's way smarter to tip after because I would gamble in a very busy environment. Well, obviously, in a bar, I always over tip at the beginning. Yes, for sure, because I need that focus. But in a restaurant, if it's like slammed, I would I would tip at the beginning. Do you yeah. tip the waitstaff or do you tip a manager because then he'll glide you faster through the whole process, probably right? Like it's probably easier to give a hundred. Uh, well, I'm tipping the waiter for if it's a slammed restaurant, especially if I have like people with me or a business right. meeting or I got to go or any of those type of things, I'm tipping the very beginning. I just did it right now before I came here at the Dream Hotel. The girl's going to order and she's going to stay there to eat there in person. I'm going to leave. I ordered two burritos to go for me and Roger. I paid her an extra 20 in advance. I was like, she's going to pay the bill, but I'm going to leave. I need the food quickly. And so I prepaid. That's yeah. She mm -hmm. did take a little bit too long, but at least I had that. Right. That gets yeah, annoying she, real yeah, fast, yeah, that's though. Focus, yeah. so when you give the pre-tip and they take long, you're like... But that's what I'm saying. It's a risk, right? It's like, yo, you're not going to come through for me. I already blessed you. Like, you already right. know what you got for it. And then they kind of slack. That's what kind of bothers me. I think I think your demeanor and your energy can kind of indicate, like, oh, shit, I should take care of this customer. Yeah. And then when they take care of you, you're like, I got you. you we, should, we should start... Offer asking for tips on this podcast. <laughs> that's like awesome. from the guests. Well, that's, well I could meet your net worth. <laughs> Since we went off on a crazy tangent of tipping, um, I was going to ask you, Dan, because I've done some uh, research on you. And um, I was going to, you said that you like to work because it's not a necessity, but because you just enjoy it. But do you love the money or do you love the. How do I how making do I say, the money? Do you love making the money or do you like the actual money after you, after the fact? So it's interesting because I actually have no emotion to money anymore for a long time now. <sighs> Imagine it's that's that's game. a lot of money you have. No, it's really the game. Like I'm, I'm obsessed with the game because there's a lot of things that I do that I do for free or don't make much money or send it to my charity. So I don't actually touch the money that has like a charity component to it. That happens all the time. The game of money is fascinating. I'm obsessed. I need... So it's like chess for you, constant chess. Absolutely, nonstop. Every day. Are right now, Jewish? I'm thinking about it. I'm like ready to... What's that? Are you Jewish? Yeah. yeah. Same. Right, right now, I'm thinking about... Fleischman is a Jewish... I had to double day. check. Yeah. It's in the DNA. Yeah. Yeah, my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor and my grandmother. Oh, wow. He wrote a whole book on the Holocaust. That's crazy. Yeah. Part of my passion for working, too, is like... He was 91 years old, still teaching Yiddish. Like, he was literally in a hospital bed, and his students would come from Beverly Hills High School, and he was teaching Yiddish. Because, I think you just like, need a purpose, right? Yeah, At some exactly. point, like, I always say, I can't wait to be out and be done and just live on a boat and in Greece. What? And then yeah, right. you're like, yeah, right. 
That's how, how much works. could I jerk off? All yeah. my shame will live with me on that boat. <laughs> Correct. There's no, yeah, your shame is going to. I have, I have uh, this question popped into my head at four in the morning while I was pooping. And I thought of you, Dan. I appreciate it. And, and I thought <laughs> this from your experience, can you tell me what's the easiest way to make a million dollars? I'm not saying gambling. If that is fine. But if you're like, Hey, you, is there, what's, what's the, clearest path if you want to make a million bucks so we'll be employee number two or employee number three for someone who's crazy so you making a million dollars is actually going to take a lot longer because you're going to reinvest everything into the business so if i come work for you and i'm like hey give me five percent of gross sales right i'll be your national sales manager i have way more likely i'm gonna make more money than you first you're gonna make more money later if you sell the company but if i go start selling assholes live forever at every retail store every department store and i drive around and see 20 locations a day selling your clothing that i already know works and you're the crazy guy that has to run the company pay the bills pay the overhead pay the manufacturing pay the shipping pay for warehousing you pay for everything and i just make five percent of gross sales i'm gonna make a million dollars and you're not one day you will but i'm gonna make the cash first. that's a fact Jesus Christ. by the way i just got so sad <laughs> <laughs> But he's right though he's right though I'm, that's the truth that's why that's why they say sales is probably the best way to yes. make money even people like you know those guys that walk around in miami they're like oh what do you do for a living how did you make yeah. so much money why do you have a lamborghini and the guy would be like well i do insurance sales yeah. or i do this sales because there's no cap it's just unlimited you're you know selling what? for someone else that already is the thing right, right? the insurance company if i'm going to sell for geico i don't have to have any overhead geico does my job is to go tell you guys to go buy Geico Nick. and you believe it. And then you just collect the commission. You, you just work out of a car. Dude, exactly. it's like my girlfriend's band. My girlfriend is a wedding band. And I'm like, you have the greatest job ever. You have no overhead. You guys don't work until you're paid. Right. right? You don't have a building. You don't mm -hmm. have uniforms. You don't have like the payroll. Like everyone only works when the phone yep. rings. But imagine I was her agent and all I did all day long for eight hours a day was call a hundred different wedding venues, wedding planners, wedding, 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 wedding. And I was pitching her and I get 20% as her manager or agent. And you have to do even less. I do nothing but call. Yeah. I could be in my freaking boxers texting and calling and call a hundred times a day, get her four bookings a day at five grand a piece. And I'm making a thousand bucks a head, five grand a day. I make a million dollars in six months. But you see, that's why middlemen always make the most money. Yes. Well, let me, let me ask this question because you bring up a very interesting point. And I think a lot of people who, you know, there's a, obviously you probably could thank Shark Tank, but a giant entrepreneur culture, yes. right? And mostly you to blame as well. Yeah. I think the hardest thing people have is the ability to sell themselves or to sell believe. this great idea, yeah. right? So I think like you just told me how someone can make a million dollars off of me, right? And it sounds terrifying to someone like me because I don't like that part of sales where you're like, yo, just call a hundred people and I know you're gonna get rejected a mm -hmm. bunch of times, but that's how it works, right? Is it's not, is it a glamorous job? Like what is sales essentially? Sales is being completely, completely agnostic and like you don't care when someone says no. You have to not care about it at all because it's going to happen, just math. But if I call, I did this with my energy drink. Literally every day, I told every single person, if you make 20 calls a day or go to 20 locations, 20 liquor stores, 20 grocery stores, and you get four appointments and you close one, you will make 150 grand a year for me. But what if you close two a day or three a day? And as we build the brand, you start to close four, five, and six because it's easier to sell. And everyone just started to work for me because 20 calls a day or 20 appointments a day, four actually become real appointments, one becomes a sale. And by breaking that down, they know they're going to hear no or maybe or later or the bar manager's not here, the restaurant manager's not here, the liquor store guy's not here, whatever. They did it every day. We got into 55,000 stores in four years. Bro, that's nuts. That's a lot. My sales team was guys like us. How old were you? I was 23 to 27. And that was when you were the youngest mm -hmm. CEO of a publicly traded company. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. That's, that's all we did, by the way. Remember, all I had was MySpace back then. There was no Instagram. Correct. Uh, so let me I, ask you a question. In that energy drink, right? You like to sell things, right? Like, was there anything proprietary about this drink? Is there, or were you just like, dude, let's white label something that exists. I have an idea. and But, but the strength is going to be in the sales, right? Not in like... Oh, we're going to compete with Red Bull for athletes, right? So it was similar to you in the sense it was a name. It was a catchphrase, right? Yep. The trademark was, who's your daddy? So I owned a slogan that people knew for something, whether it was for sex, humor, or sport. People said, who's your daddy, or something. So 17 years old, we did a million bucks. 18 years old, we did 9.5 million. 19, we start to scale all clothing, only clothing. And then I was like, I'm going to make an energy drink because they all taste like cough syrup. 
So when you say, is there something proprietary? I just want to make the best flavored drink. I found a chemist that worked with Gatorade. He gave us a bunch of flavor options. We picked cranberry pineapple. And he said, when you do a million dollars in sales, I'll then give you the green tea. Nobody had a green tea energy back then. So we get cranberry pineapple. We do a million dollars in sales. We win flavor of the year on BevNet, which is BevNet's the only like Bible in the beverage space. And I'm up against 900 drinks. And so I used that magazine. I carried it with me for four years, obviously. Every meeting, like, you know. Right. Even though it was four years old, I'm like. Dude, who cares? <laughs> right? Yeah, who cares? And so the thing that stood out for us was we were the first zero sugar, zero carb, zero calorie energy drink. We had an 8.4 ounce and a 16 ounce. But we didn't reinvent any wheels, right? Red Bull, Monster, Rockstar. The second we did it, they did it. Right. They were all black and silver cans. Mine were bright yellow, bright red, and green for the green tea. And so as soon as I made it, what did Red Bull Monster do? A whole bunch of different colors, a whole bunch of different flavors. So I can't beat the 800-pound gorilla from that perspective. When I said 55,000 stores, they were in 500,000 stores, a million stores, whatever the number is, right? And so in that aspect, my goal, whatever I did, I did hoverboards. I just want to be a faster, cheaper, more affordable, cooler hoverboard that ships right away. And I did the poker site, 550 poker sites. We were top five by being the cool poker site with Dan Bilzerian, Steve Aoki, et cetera. Right. I just try to find something that's already out there and not reinvent the wheel and just make it cooler, faster, and more efficient. That's it. That's kind of your approach with everything. Everything. But is that something, it's a, it's a passion, it's like a problem solving thing that you have, or it's more of like, you're just like, all right, I just have an edge and this is what I want to do to compete. I see the game part of it because I study like, what do people complain about with that company or that niche or that, with hoverboards, for example, everyone complained how long it took. It took two months because they were getting the money. So Oh, they weren't shipping for two months. China would make them and then they would sell Right, them. they didn't have the money. They'd get, the, someone paid them 1500 bucks, they'd send the money to China, China would make it and then ship it, right? So I came and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do same day shipping. I'm not going to even advertise until I get the hoverboards, hoverboards here in my warehouse. So you need some capital ahead of time. For that one, right. yeah. yes. Yeah. For the, and then for the poker site, I just saw that there was a void. There was no cool poker site. So I'm going to put a bunch of Playboy Playmates, Dan Bilzerian, Steve Aoki, all these characters. Or to no make, influencer ones yet either, right, at nobody, the time. Like no, Bilzerian would, would, at that time, Bilzerian is like getting blessed by the Pope on yeah. the internet, right? For like dudes who are trying to be like this, you know. Yeah, when we got started, it was like putting Twitter on his phone, you know, like right. Instagram was just coming out. Like those type of characters, I was just looking at the other poker sites were very corporate and I wanted to make a cool poker site. Each time, every company I've done has never been a reinvention of the wheel. I'm just finding a niche, even even now. Like I'm finding things that I see standing out in the event space. I bought an event company last summer. There's a zillion business conferences, hundreds of thousands of business conferences. Yeah. In eight months, we're the biggest one in the country. It's called Aspire Tour. Right. Because I already saw business conferences. I'll make it like a rock concert. I'll have Little Wayne and Steve Aoki and all these characters, Rick Ross, perform at an event, which is normally like a boring business conference. Right. I'm going to add A-Rod and Sarah Blakely and Kevin Hart to come speak at a business conference to make it more fun. Yeah, hey, you're like the Dave Grutman of speaking. Perfect, yes. Yeah, you're literally yeah. In that, you're bringing... And I booked amazing. Dave Grutman. Let's get him in. Right. <laughs> like, you right. know, like I'm looking at it as if I know the business conferences work as they are, what if I add... A bunch of spice on top. What if yeah. I make them more fun? To make it more interesting. Right. Well, see, you're kind of playing in like when I go gamble, I, I don't spend a lot of money because I'm just like a turd, right? But you're doing high risk, high reward setups, right? Like all those other conferences aren't like, oh, we should spend what, a hundred right. grand to get Little Wayne here, right. right? Where you go, if I just get Little Wayne here for that hundred, I'll make that money back for sure. Ten times fold. You you just gotta have the balls and the approach to, to believe in yourself and everything you touch so much that you're like yes I will take a million dollar risk here right. a million dollar risk here and hopefully it all you know yep and I might not see the ROI right you don't know if Little Wayne converts for you that day that week right. that month but I know that now I can always talk about Little Wayne performing and, and you just added so much more validity and mm -hmm. people are like oh I'm gonna go talk at that conference for because sure. who knows what you know as much as just access to Little Wayne period in the same room right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with sports cards. I opened the sports card stores. Dude, I don't even understand how this world works. I was going to ask you about this. Well, it's been around for 100 years, but we all grew up for the last 30 years seeing sports card stores that are just boring. Oh, right? my God. The, yeah, the malls, they were just like so dead and some old guy fat that guy. Runs it. Yeah. yeah, it's the yeah, father, father and son, 30 years. The son is 18, the dad is 52, and they've just been there, right? And so Gary Vee named Cards and Coffee. That's how I started it. And then I brought in Steve Aoki, Post Malone, all these guys to invest into making it cool bunch of football players because I saw a void in the market. All the other stores are boring. They don't have eBay, StockX. They're not selling online. 
They don't make video content. They don't have social media. They just don't do the things that I'm going to do. And so even when I go show them the pathway, none of them are doing it. Nobody's changing. And so I step into the market. We open nine stores, 30 million in sales in a couple of years because the stores I know work, right? The basic store works. They do a million, two million bucks a year. It works. What if I add musicians and celebrities and athletes and make it fun, have hot girls opening up cards online? Like, what if I make it more fun? You know, have Lily, your friend, like have her right. wearing a Pokemon outfit and opening up Pokemon cards. Right. People are going to think about it and talk about it. It doesn't matter the ROI if Lily converts for me sales that night. It's that now people think about us as a so brand. You're building the brand. That's a brand exactly. building exercise. Yeah, exactly. Are you more like Steve Jobs in the sense that because everything you just said sounds amazing, but it sounds exhausting, right? Are you like, okay, we're going to do coffee shops that have uh, trading cards and we're going to partner with these guys and these guys and these guys. All right, team, go. go. Or are you sitting there the same way that I'm in here dealing with just one project, Assholes of Forever? And are you like, all right, we're focusing on this this year. And what are we picking? The wallpaper? We're doing this. Are you that involved? Or are you more like a Steve Jobs character, right? Like you're the brain thing. Do you delegate everything or do you put your hands on yeah, it? How dirty are these hands getting? Yeah. So I set up everything to begin with. I don't even bring it to my team or staff until it's like I've lived and breathed sports cards or events or whatever I'm doing. I've lived and breathed it first. Because you want to get to know it as much as possible. Yes. Because I don't want to do it and then like it kind of fade away or waste a bunch of people's time or money and energy. Uh, but I'm really hands on the beginning where I don't even bring it to the team. Then I find a quarterback, meaning a CEO that's going to run that thing. I will not do any project without a quarterback. It will not happen. You couldn't offer me $30 million to start a tequila brand unless I had someone to run the tequila brand. Couldn't care less. I'm not going to do it because I know myself time-wise. I'm running a bunch of different companies, events, sports cards, charities, speaking. Well, there's just so many things going on that I physically couldn't run. Even if you literally handed me $30 million, I cannot dedicate time and energy and focus. Not because the money's not relevant. It's because I don't know how someone to run it on a day-to-day -day basis. Correct. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, there is a, a CEO for each company. If I didn't show up for a week, the company still runs, right? If I didn't show up for a month, the company still runs. I don't have to run any one of these companies. However, I'm useful for the relationships. I still got to sign for anything over 10K. Like if there's, I still have things in place to run each thing. But my job is to manage every group chat, every event, every company, every charity, every project is a group chat. Every investment is a group chat. So I'm actively there doing a zillion messages a day. But the main thing I'll say is if I wasn't there for a month, it would still run, okay. which is how I know it's still business. Does the worrying of a project ever burn you out? No, I like it. I expect it. Do you ever get burnt out in general if you feel like a lot of things, let's say you have to problem solve all at the same time. Let's say you have four projects and out of those four projects, three projects, you need a lot of attention to devote to it. Yeah. Do you ever get burnt out having to deal with that? No. And, and how do you deal I, with I'm it? I'm obsessed with it. I'm a sicko. <laughs> so it's like, I know going in, there's going to be problems. I know right now my phone is lighting up. I know there's problems. All how much time. anxiety do you have Zero. right now that you're not oh, with your phone? I because be I have... I'm like, oh no, it's almost, you, there's times when there's no Wi-Fi in an airplane. Oh my God, I hate that. And I, I think that when I'm landing, the world is on fire, like torch, scorched right. it, right? Yeah. yeah. The warehouse is upside down. Yeah. Like, and no. people are like, oh, did I, you stay off your phone. I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> no. There's too many, th like this was a cute statement 15 years right. ago when people were still like cell phone addiction. Like right. these are businesses being run strictly from this little right. thing. Empires. Right? Yeah. Like literally mm -hmm. people are going to lose jobs if I don't look at my phone. Correct. I'm sorry that you can't let me check my phone in Correct. dinner, but I have to. Mm -hmm. The fact that you don't get burnt out is kind of wild, right? Because that trips me out. Because I'm addicted it, to it. That's why. Right. But, my, but, but were you like this always? Or <laughs> yeah. do you think you were, is something you're born with or something you can handle? How does it work? Like if it's an outside viewer is watching this and he's like, how can I get better? I'm not getting burning, burning out or well, I don't, stressing. I don't recommend being an entrepreneur. Someone would say <laughs> you have a mental illness. Yeah. Right, because the true <laughs> non-mental illness would be like some guy who's just like content with just not doing anything. Well, maybe that's that, a mental that illness. That would make too. me. That would give me anxiety. What? Right, not doing anything. You told me to go sit on the beach for thirty days. Actually, me saying it makes me a little weird. I feel like I you're scared of being alone with your thoughts. Maybe you're just running. Maybe you have more issues there's than lot, you let on. Going on up in here. Right, so you're like, as long, if I can run thirty businesses, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to be alone on the beach and hear this yeah. thing talk. I, I physically couldn't do it. What's the longest vacation you've ever taken? What's that? A vacation. Not What's really. the longest vacation? You don't do them. 
I really haven't. You don't I, do vacations. I enjoy where I go. Yeah, that's true too. But I'm not going to go sit in Cabo. Like I've been to Cabo. Right? Awful I've had place. Fun. Like I've been to Costa Rica. I've been to places that are vacation type places. But I am working. What and is the longest your phone has been off? Yom Kippur. I think for 25 hours. Oh wow! You let religion override money. One day a year, yes. What a bad I Jew. I like that honestly. One it's day a, a year. It's not bad. He's not even about that action. No, I can't. I don't believe any of that stuff. So, I mean, I, did, I just didn't come from like a... I like a little Yankee poor action, though. What? A little Yankee poor well, action. Well, un- unplugging is good, right? <laughs> so maybe in this day and age, it might have less to do with religion and more like, oh, maybe it's just like a healthy... You don't do Shabbat, obviously. Mm-hmm. No Shabbat. I go to Shabbat dinners, but I don't, I'm not religious like that. You see? I mean, I'm not that consistent. Okay, make me feel good for a second. Yeah. Yes, I have Shabbat. When have you failed? <laughs> the online poker one. Victory Poker. Built a company... $65 million, five employees, six figures a week. And then April 15th, poof, Bilzerian calls me at 10, 10 in the morning. I'll never forget it. Where are you? I'm like, I'm at the Bellagio. Where are you? He's like, look, tells me to look on the news. And online poker got shut down in America. Oof. April 19th, four days later, I've got Playboy Playmates, photographers and videographers, every major poker player flying to Costa Rica Oof. to the Gaia Hotel that I rented out the entire resort to do a photo shoot April 19th. Because I'm getting in 3.5 million deposit on this huge deal with my competitor who's buying a piece of the company. And we're doing 65 million. So you can imagine the valuation. April 15, four days prior, the whole world shuts down for poker. How do you problem solve that? 10, 10 a.m. He calls me. I'm in town. I'm living in Malta by myself at this time. Right? I'm living in a place I'd never even heard of before called Malta for my gaming license for the last two years. I happen to be in Vegas to meet at 12 o'clock with the guy that's like the gazillionaire in gaming. He invented the slot machine loyalty card. So when you're at the slot machines and then you put that card in and you see the old people with like the... Is that plugged in? Yeah, that's yeah. him. He sold it for $445 million. He also owns the Jeopardy Wheel of Fortune licenses. So this guy's like a whole different planet. So 12 o'clock is my meeting with him. 10, 10 a.m. I find out. I'm going over there. By the way, texting's not that big a thing. This is like 2010, 11, April Bro, 15th. At 10 a.m. you find out that your entire company is belly up and you still attend a noon meeting? Absolutely. I would have jumped off a balcony. Here's the crazy part about this meeting. I didn't know that he actually set me up. You know why he invited me there? To train 11 sheriffs how to wow. play poker and blackjack for the rest of the afternoon. So he used the meeting not to help you, but to help himself. Yeah. What a beast, <laughs> this guy. Yeah. What a scumbag. So I'm there thinking I'm public. <laughs> machine guy. What do you expect? <laughs> I'm there thinking I'm That's like. lucky. Public, right, <laughs> public enemy number one because my competitors are now arrested by the FBI. You log into Poker Stars and Full Tilt Poker, Absolute Poker, it says property of the FBI. Luckily, I didn't get in trouble. My website didn't say anything. I never got a letter. I never got in trouble. Thank God. I don't know that. I didn't know what they did yet. I don't know what happened to them. And so I don't have the information yet. It's only been 90 minutes since I just found out, right? So I tell the cops right at the gate, like, hey, I'm going to have to step away a little bit to look at my phone because my competitors got in big trouble, blah, blah. I didn't get, I like told them the story just because I don't want to get arrested and I don't know what's going on. And so I'm teaching them how to play blackjack and poker <laughs> on the phone with my attorneys, come back on the phone with KPMG accounting. What am I doing on the phone with like, so that's how it all happened. So yes, there are failures. Wow. I've had multiple failures. There's no one called uh, first, first slice media, 300 million page views our first year, fastest growing media site ever. Sounds cool, right? We had 60 million page views. We had Kylie, Kim, everyone posting. I had control of their Facebooks posting these news articles, right? about to my website and then i was paying them that's how you kind of have to drive eyes right yes it's essentially the fashion nova model right yep. we're publishing articles across these celebrities pages amber rose tiger everybody right i'm posting for them i get to be i get to play you have an admin uh, yeah. thing, yeah and so i'm posting news articles they're making six figures 50 grand 80 grand 200 grand 300 grand a month from me paying them sounds cool until december that year after i just had 62 million page views the month before it goes down to one. Why does it do that? Because Facebook it was called the Facebook winter. They changed the algorithm so that you couldn't click on links to leave the page. You watch mm. the article. It's called instant articles. Inside of Facebook. And you don't get the ad revenue. Nothing. No. Zuckerberg does. I mean, can you blame him? Not at all. Right? <laughs> do, so do you have that kind of business mind where you're like, and now no. I just got to either fuck them better instead of, or like, because you can't hold a businessman no. against doing business, right? Yeah. But damn. 
That one hurt. That that because we were crushing and that hurt. So what happens to that situation? Are you just hemorrhaging cash? Or you go, guys, we're out of money. Everyone goodbye, sorry, and everyone, and you're like, fuck. I hope I didn't burn any bridges for the next project, right? Yeah. yeah so in that scenario, I told all the employees we were at the penthouse of the W Hotel. How many people are employed? 15, 15 writers. Oh wow. They're writing the articles all day long. Most companies, I try not to have a bunch of executives. It's really usually like one or two guys, and that's it. And then my team, me and my CEO, and my accounting. My brother does all the accounting because. Um, he's like the white picket fence version of me and two kids fresh off the boat. Wife came right. from Russia, married her when she was 19, you know, like different life. So he managed my life for the accounting side. So my brother's team managed every project, my CEO, 30 years in the TV game. He managed every business. And outside that, I try not to bring in a bunch of executives anyways. So at that point we had 15 writers at the W and I just told him, I'm like, Hey, we don't get traffic anymore. There's no way we can proceed with this thing. Um, there's no way the revenue is going to work at a million or two million a month. So I prepaid them for the next month of their uh, salaries. Salary, yeah. Yep. And I just told them, and some of them I gave them like six weeks or eight weeks, like kind of like an extra bonus. And I was like, yeah, we're going to have to close down because there's no solution. I don't know what to do because Twitter's not going to work. I'm not going to send like 30 million views on Twitter. Right, right, right. It was not that powerful. Does, yeah. does that kind of shit discourage you or you just go, cool, like brush it off? And then move right on to the next idea. Or so, you always have five ideas going. Well, that so one I was it's like having 10 kids and one of them dies. You're like, no, whatever. Well, when I had Who's Your Daddy, it was the only thing. When I had Victory Poker, it was the only thing. When I had First Slice Media, it was the only thing. At that point, I realized I'm, never, I'm not going to have only one thing. I can't have all my eggs in one basket again. Because each time it was like some situation is what caused me to leave that category. Whether poker was shut down, right. Facebook was shut down, etc. And so I didn't want to risk any one core business on anyone else being able to screw me over or close it down because to me, the scoreboard is a scoreboard. It's still a failure. Whether Dan thinks he failed or not, the company's gone. Right. So I have this rule, don't sit on the floor and cry about it. If I sit on the floor and cry about it and sit here and tell you guys, oh my God, what could have been? I lost the 65 million. What do you guys care? It's just sad. It's yeah. like a guy still crying it, about it his is, ex. It is a, it right. is You're a like, wound, bro, though. move on. No one, no one really pays attention to your failures. Yeah. Like the people who are busy, don't. they're just like, I'm just more impressed people are keep, like, still going at it. You just got to keep going. Can't quit. And you just think about all the legends that were out there. Elon, Zuckerberg, Bezos, all the guys that are trillionaires, right? All of them had failures. And they still have failures. Bro, they have daily failures that literally would make people kill themselves mm -hmm. if they had to take on that responsibility yeah, sure. for the day. Do you think there's a level of success that where a person should stop before it gets to be too much pressure? Right, because when you see some crazy shows like Succession and you're like, is anybody having a good time? <laughs> right. You're like everybody looks miserable, miserable. with their money. Yeah. Right. At what point, how much money does somebody need where they could be like, life is good and I'm not dealing with like, you know, protecting the family kind of vibes where it just gets weird. Once you hit anything over $5 million, you can be set up for your whole family forever. If you literally just put it into something basic like a CD and make 6% a year, 5% a year, you're getting 50 grand a month forever. What else do you need? I don't care what type of lifestyle you want no, to live. 50 grand a month is perfectly fine. Yeah. Right? Cash. And then after tax. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Right. And so like, and if you had 10 million, holy shit, you're making 80 grand a month forever. Like you don't need anything more than that. The difference of you having one Lamborghini and two is nothing. The difference of you having a fancy plane or this plane is nothing. Like those type of things to get like an actual private jet, actual yachts, you have to have hundreds of millions of dollars really to And that comes them. with its problems i would never own one of those things if i had a trillion dollars i wouldn't own them because of the headache the three f's exactly if it fucks floats or flies you should always rent it yes wow yeah that's a t-shirt that uh, we're making it out <laughs> it's a famous saying but it's a Bill great Burr used to say it. he's like you want to be the guy that shows up with the beer on your friend's boat instead of being the guy who's got to own the boat you don't want to ma maintain that shit no just but, but some people want to be the the host right some people like being i the want to be the host but also i don't want to work as hard as it takes to own a yacht i like renting <laughs> yachts i like renting private jets i like renting these things because it's much more efficient and just like your hotel room example i want to be able to get off the plane and leave I want to get off the boat and the mayhem that happened on the boat, they got to clean you it like, up. You don't like commitment. You don't like committing to these things. You're a gypsy. I don't like the idea of <laughs> handling the, the the headaches of it. Yeah. I'm committed to it. I'm, I'll own the same yacht for the rest of my life. That's right. not a problem. Be I don't want to deal with the maintenance, the problems. Right. It breaks down. You yeah, know, he, he, spent, he wants he, to be the you, second man. He Well, well not, be, but, uh, yeah. honestly, you... That's probably the smartest thing. Well, the most I want to be the second man everywhere after you pitch that idea. <laughs> your, I don't want to be the first man. Yeah. In your first opinion, man gets paid right. last. <sighs> I agree with you because you save time. 
I don't, I don't want to clean the, the kelp algae off the bottom of a yacht. No. Right? When, when people <laughs> failed as a, as a billionaire, if you're the one doing that. And when people but say, also oh, I want to have a house person, in Malibu, yeah. I'm like, absolutely not. I want a house in Malibu. I don't want it by the water. I don't want nothing to do with that yeah, house. Rent, rent it. Well, I, I rented one for his birthday in Malibu a few months ago. It was great. And then we left. And they had to clean up the mess. I'll tell you what, I did too. <laughs> I rented a house in Malibu. And we show up, they're like, our stairs blew away. <laughs> what? Because there was a storm was so bad, the stairs to the beach. And I was sitting there being like, dude, that must be, like, be awful owning something on the water. Like all the salt damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I'm good. Like, I don't need to do this. I don't, I don't need to call 17 different contractors to come and clean my house. Like, no. would take this off. That rock swims here. Then you got all the seawater. Like, I just don't need this. Like, well, I, I, don't, I have enough issues in my brain as is <laughs> every day. I don't need to think about this 24-7, you know? Malibu is annoying because I was very sympathetic to homeless people in, on the East Coast. Because I feel like they had to deal with Brutal, a lot. The weather. Brutal. Yeah. I came here. It took me like a month to turn on homeless people. I came with open heart, open mind. I'm like, it's, people are hard on their luck. I, I get it. Bro, it took a month. I'm like, how is this cocksucker allowed to have a billion dollar view in Malibu in his trailer? And they have Wi-Fi. Yeah. Right. I, Computer it's screens, everything. Homeless people, no, I'm not into the LA ones. No, the, the West Coast uh, homeless They're people. They're like privileged. They got it good. They're very privileged. Very good tans. Like I can't even. I'm actually. It. This is. They're. The, I'm jealous of their lifestyle. I think I'm, I'm coming from a place of jealousy because I'm like, <laughs> you're literally living in Malibu for free in an RV, and honestly, like great weather, not that bad. I'm great from Russia. Weather. I like peasant food. Like I could eat fried bologna the rest of my life. Yeah, but they're making hundred bucks a day in cash. Are they? For sure. What, just like what? Yeah, for sure. I would literally walk around and be like, "Give me a hundred dollars, or I'll fucking stab you." Like I wouldn't even pan. I would just. You make a lot people. more than hundred bucks a day, then. Yeah. <laughs> you make like two yeah, I mean, bro, yeah, you just walk around Hollywood for twenty minutes. You get yeah. more than a hundred bucks for sure. in tips easily, especially if you're like, like you said, if you look like you're actually hard on your luck. You just gotta have a good look. But in Marketing, Mal but in Malibu, yeah. you're getting fives and twenties. And most people don't drive around with dollars anymore. If they do have cash, it's like big. Yeah, it's got to suck for homeless people when it, when cash, it became cash like Cash app, Apple Pay now. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, you can Venmo me. I'm like, really, bro? Well, you got the Obama phone? I'm like, yeah. what the fuck am I going to Venmo you on? <laughs> I know it's wrong too, but I literally I get annoyed when a homeless person has a cell phone. So, me too. That's, I'm like, that is annoying. I'm like, I know you need it. Obviously, in the digital age, like you obviously need some sort of connection to the world, but that bothers me. You, like, last night in front of Tao, we walk outside, and this lady says. She's like, oh, Dan, I like your content, blah, blah, blah. Wild looking lady. Like I wasn't going to have like a long discussion with her. And I'm like in motion to walk. And I saw a kid that was holding a box of candy with her. I get next door to the Dream Hotel. And the kid rushes over before we were about to walk in. And he was like, it starts giving me his whole spiel about being homeless, selling this candy, et cetera. I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. How much candy do you have here? I'll buy the whole tray. But I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. Your job is to go to all those homeless people and have to give them two to four candies each. If you don't do and I see you in the next few days, I'm going to have a problem. So the kid's dead because he got dead. stabbed by a homeless person. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> he, he, Dan, you nuts. <laughs> he starts giving me the speech of his life, showing me on his cell phone. By the way, he's homeless. On his cell phone, he's like, the day I got out of jail, the same day I had a This kid's like 20-something. He's 20-nothing, right? The day I got out of jail, the same day I had a baby. Look at the text messages with my girl. She was yelling at me. What should I say to her? Like, sometimes they just want to talk. Right. And I, I gave him like a minute or two. I was like, hey, you have a job to do. You're going to go over to those homeless people and start handing out the candy. So go upstairs. And like an hour later, I walk back out because I know he's still going to be there. Half of his tray's gone. I said, okay, keep the rest of it. Sell that to, to make some money. He said, thank you, thank you. I was like trying to figure out what I was supposed to do. Like what was like the moral thing? And he tried to give me a speech again. I'm like, all right, that's it. Just <laughs> Your brain works in very phenomenal ways the, i'll be the, honest with you you know why because you, even just talk, talking to you and you're like oh listen i don't get burnt out i don't get worried i'm not stressed i'm not this i'm not that many people here get stressed from going to the grocery store sure. you understand what i'm saying so you have a talent that you're born with if i would consider that and also you're kind of walking around blessing people without them realizing it like you gave them a hundred but you didn't give them a fish you were trying to no, I teach to him work. how to yeah. fish mm -hmm. right like it was kind of like in but that moment confused. you were trying to even drop a life lesson on someone like if i wanted that guy to out of my face and be like there's a hundred right get Don't the fuck out of here <laughs> like right but you're like but i like that i'm gonna instill some sort of like discipline or something you something. know which i like which is and by the way the things that you said i am aware of all those things meaning i'm aware of frustration pain anxiety problems i just know that they're gonna happen going in 
And so how dare I get upset with them? If I know my employee is going to be late or I know a girl's going to be late to dinner, why am I going to yell at the girl? I know she's going to be late. She's been late 17 times in the past. Why am I getting mad at her number 18? If I know my employee is late 15 times in a row, he's the, it's my job to fire him or just know he's going to be late. And that's part of the thing. Meaning you don't attach uh, emotion to the expectation that you already have. I right. If he's going to get in a cage with a tiger and he gets bit by a tiger, he can't be mad that that happened. Why am happened. I mad at the tiger? Right. <laughs> like I, he guess, knows- I guess the issue is, right, I guess most people are born with no innate emotional intelligence, let alone do they learn it as they go, right? And you figured out a way to do that at an early age. Because very early, I saw people disappoint me. I saw people die. I saw people have situations. I saw things all the time, left and right. So I became unemotional to those things. Right. Like a lot of Russians are cold. I was cold because of actual things that happened, not just how I was, how I grew up. And so I've been, I try to instill that in my employees. It's not easy. I try to instill that in friends and girls and parents and everybody in between, like, bad things are going to happen and how you react to them is just going to prolong how bad it is. Right. And I would rather not react to them and just try to fix it, which again, employees don't always want to hear. Girls don't always want to hear. Friends don't always want to hear. They don't want to hear the solutions. They like dragging it out. They like the emotions. They like the drama. They like gossiping. They like to tell you the story of what messed up, right? They like it. It's like a thing and I don't have any time for it. Yeah. I think a victim mentality is a big thing, Mm -hmm. right? It gives people, yeah. personality yeah people where you're like i know comes out getting to- into a relationship you know you're gonna get hurt right but you still do it that's essentially what he's doing right he knows that no matter what all those emotions are gonna come up so why run from but you know what all those emotions happen no matter what you do right so at least like aim for the stars right i'm gonna go take on big projects because all this anxiety and blah 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 that i will face i'll face as a truck driver right right it's just same the, That's a good the, point. The, the emotions and all the terribleness comes from the shitty job and the really like non-shitty job but i'm sure the happiness over there on the other end is probably a lot more than just like well, having well, a good well, trucker job well the happiness depends you know if you go to like foreign countries there costa rica india etc those kids are not just homeless, they're like destitute. And I, they're smiling, running around, playing with a ball. And they're happy as can be. They're happier than most American children. So yeah. sometimes it's different. Like when you actually think about the money doesn't equate to the happiness, it's our mindset and, well, yeah, it's, and your environment. It's all right. about how you right. debrief yourself mentally. You know? I, yeah. I get jealous when I see starving people. I'm like, look how skinny they look. <laughs> right. You got to look on the bright side of every bad situation, bro. It's an interesting thing because... Even me, I catch myself getting flustered or frustrated or something like that because, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, what a lot of people have an issue with a target. You will have a good time picking targets. Now, my question to you is if a young person is watching this, even for myself, and they have a bunch of options on their table, right? And they have a hard time making decisions of picking like, oh, do I start a, a trucking company? Do I start a clothing brand? Do I go into real estate? What advice do you have for those people? I, I say the word, taste it. Go try it. Like, go work for someone. You want to go clothing? Go intern for Damon John. Go intern for Kiro. Like, go work for someone in this game. I've been, taste I've it. been interning. I think the problem, though, is a lot of people's choices for what they want to do in life sometimes doesn't come from a passion. It comes from... Hunger for money. For, uh, I need money. And so sometimes the solutions are short-sighted sure. for quick gain, yes. right? Where you're like, I need cash, rent's due next month, yeah. right? Like I can't build a brand by next month, right? So going and researching everything about a category before you go into trucking, like you want to go trucking, <clears throat> go try it, go work for a company. Whether you work in the office or work as an actual trucker for a month or two, go try it. Learn everything, study everything, watch every YouTube video, go to the trucking conference, like immerse yourself into it and see if you like it or hate it or love it or get more excited. But you might go to the real estate conference like, oh shit, I like this one. Oh no, you know what? I really want to do clothing. Like going out and trying it and studying everything about it, you will will know quickly if after you watched eight hours of YouTube videos and went to some conferences and met, like you show up and work in a warehouse for two weeks, you're either going to love it or hate it, right? There's no like kind of getting by. In between, yeah. The people too often, they're just like see something on TV and they're like, I want to do clothing or I want to be a trucker or I want to be in real estate. They don't know until they try it. Now that you built all these companies, right? And you just told Kirill, you said the fastest way to make a million dollars is not to start the company, Mm -hmm. is to work for the person that started the company. Mm -hmm. Do you take that advice in your own daily life now? Like when you are doing business, are you starting stuff still? Or you're just like, I'm actually just going to be the 
the brain and the one that gets paid for this. In most of my companies, I never make any money until it exits. So Cars and Coffee, I put up 1.6 million to start it, October 2020. I've loaned 500K, 300K, 200K. I've never taken a dollar out. But on the back, you're waiting on the back end. If it works, I win, right? I own more than 50% of the company. If it works, I have a big payday. If it doesn't work, who do I call about the money I put in? Me. It's gone, right? It's like, that was, that and was so gambling. Most of the companies I'm doing, whether it's Everbowl, my acai bowl chain, all these things, I put a bunch of money in. If it works, if it sells, I make a big amount of money. It's really rare that I'm getting distributions or checks or things along the way because of that. Do you ever sit on liquid? No. You don't sit on liquid ever. You just have your liquids constantly working. I'm deploying it. The second I have an exit or something interesting happens, second money comes in from speaking or from an event or from this or that, I'm so deploying you, capital at all times because I don't, there's a couple of reasons. One, inflation is very real. And so when I'm battling eight or 9% of your inflation, if I have a million dollars or 5 million or 10 million, the numbers are relevant. If the math is the same. I'm literally losing money by having it in my bank account. So everything over 12 months of overhead, you have to deploy. So first goal in America is have 12 months of your overhead covered. Nobody does that. It's a very tiny amount of percentage of our society. Most people have 1200 bucks saved up. That's the average. $5,500 in their total savings in America, right the second. But you need $1.8 million to retire. What I always talk about is once you have 12 months or more saved up, you are far ahead of everybody in the, on the country, let alone the planet. And everything above that should be deployed. You have to invest into it. Even if you're just getting 5 or 6% a year in a CD or the S&P 500 or whatever, just something. At least it's breaking even at that point, something. right? It's not losing you money. Yeah. And so for me, I'm about I have to go to my shoebox right now. I literally, <laughs> I, but see that I'm so Russian. I grew up with my grandma having cash under the mattress. Like I have cash in the walls in my, in, in LA because I'm like, oh my God, what if everything, could, I have emergency, <laughs> like, nuts. I'm not even kidding you. I should not have that, huh? So you should have X How much amount. cash in the walls should I have? 12, 12 months. 12 months cash in the walls. We're talking about car, no, 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 house. No, 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 no. Like actual overhead. physical envelopes of cash. How much should a man in 2024 have as a secret stash? You don't have any cash on the walls anywhere. Come just, on. just to survive the apocalypse or something? Yeah. No, he's know. saying a little cash on the side ski just in case you get it. Dude, I have shit in my bank account. I have shit like yeah. working for me, but then I also have a cash stash. Yes. How much do you think is good for like a couple guy? thousand? No, I mean, if you need, if the apocalypse happens, you know, the zombies are what coming. I need, I need, you need to have 10 to 30K like to be able okay. to take care of things for the year. Again, that's not because you're not paying rent anymore, right? If the apocalypse happens, you're paying for food and bullets. Right. right? <laughs> like, I think I'll be paying in blowjobs and not cash by then, though. Yeah, you do. Yeah, have, money's going to be irrelevant. By the time the apocalypse happens, I'm going to be like, I'm on a <laughs> fans now. <laughs> cash is very useful. And in, in our society, uh, going away from cash is very strange to me. So how does digital currency play into your world? Because I'm a cash guy and him and I argue constantly about, because I'm an old man now. I'm becoming grumpier towards like the new <laughs> things. And you're like, yes, I'll welcome it all. And so him, I like, I don't understand cryptocurrency, none of that shit. I think I still think cash Basically, is long story short, what he's trying to explain is that I always tell him, stop the letting this cash <laughs> sit just in your, in, your, in your account. He does a good thing where he reinvests back into the brand, which is great because it just keeps, you know, it keeps building, it keeps compounding, which yeah. is awesome. And then also the, the tax situation, it, it, it's smart, right? Instead of taking it out, why not invest it and make it bigger, right? But if you still have cash and you're paying yourself and you have enough money to cover the overhead for the year, why not take that money you have and, to. and have it work for you on the uh, sideline? Uh, right, I just don't understand like you just, crypto. Uh, okay, I, know, I, I can walk you through that crypto. one. What? I can walk you through that. Yeah, I, I, okay, walk me through it and don't get mad at me if I'm defensive because- I'm gonna make it, it so that you, I'm gonna make it so that you can't argue, ready? Okay. So since 2014, I installed the very first Bitcoin ATM into a casino in Las Vegas. You like casinos? I love casinos. What if it was Friday night at 7.46 p.m. and you lost the five grand that you had with you? How do you get five grand more? He I, says you can't wire it. That means you need an instant. It's Friday night. In seven, Vegas? Friday I night. mean, without me being funny, fine. With Friday. me being funny, I'll <laughs> sell ass. Right? If I without, being funny. without me being funny, I'm- Where are you getting I, is your ass five thousand dollars? <laughs> I didn't say uh, five thousand times. I can tell. Okay. Well, let's, let's, Wait, okay, okay, so look, so I'm out of five grand. It's seven. Okay, I have no. Ass. So you're saying I can't go to an ATM to get cash? You could go to a Bitcoin ATM, but you can't go to regular because ATM. it's instant. You you don't need nobody's permission to get a transaction from Bitcoin because you, it, it 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 manages your transactions and it keeps and accounts for every yes. transaction. So there's no CEO of Bitcoin. There's no office for Bitcoin. The government can't stop it, and they hate that part of it. There's no office. 
to go seize all the accounts from, there's nobody to arrest. So that's one part of it, is just the access to capital instantaneously. Five grand or 50 million you could have Friday night at 7 p.m. Fine, but my question then, here's, let me ask you. My biggest fear becomes when I go and take money out of the ATM, my hundred bucks is worth a hundred bucks pretty consistently day in, day out. With Bitcoin's constant change in price, I have to time when I hit the ATM to get the most bang for my buck, right? So if I want to pull out a thousand dollars at 4 p.m., at 7 p.m., there could be a pretty large gap in the exchange. Absolutely. Except what people, when they say that, forget to realize that Bitcoin is the number one performing investment asset in the history of the world. Right. So I'm saying from an investment opportunity, I understand Bitcoin. From a day-to-day -day use, I would have trouble. Like, you know, what's the day-to-day -day use of gold? I don't have gold. That's my point. But I'm, I'm, saying, sit on but I'm saying, right, gold. if we were to talk so, about... I'm saying cash. Uh, cash so is your, easy because it's consistent. Your $100 over the last 14 years, every single year except for one, would have gone up. There hasn't been one... There's only been one losing year of Bitcoin ever. Right. So if you had money sitting in your bank account or your Bitcoin account, every single year for 14 years, it went up. Bitcoin seems more like a company, right? It's like me being like, hey, there's an Amazon ATM. And based on how much stock you have, you can take money out from the Amazon stock ATM, right? right? And we can use Amazon stock as a currency, right? So Bitcoin is a currency stock. Correct. Now essentially. Here, here's the next part of it. So Bitcoin, there's only ever going to be 21 million. You've heard this number before. Yes. What people don't mention is there's actually 4.6 million missing and more are missing every single day. And because of that, the supply is getting less. People die, people lose their wallet, people lose their Bitcoin, they lose their laptop, they lose their phone. So every single day, 4.6 million, 4.7, 4.8, is there you go, fading away. No, 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 I'm, I'm gonna... The, so, the, so the supply is getting less. Correct. But the demand... is getting high. Every single day is getting more and more and more demand. So right. that's why you keep seeing year after year, no matter how much bad media, how much bad press, how much drama, lies, scandals, and everything in between about Bitcoin, every year it goes up. So they're becoming Van Goghs. It's a That's not a it's currency. A, it's a digital. That's it, not a currency. No, it's, that's a stock it's, that it, has a limited supply. It's a digital year year. resource, bro. Right. You understand? It's like buying a painting. Every year, if it gets more and more expensive. No. It's I'm not, still confused. It's, but okay. not, it's not that. It's just supply and demand. How often are you paying for, with Bitcoin? You're not. I don't. You, you, exactly. I just it's buy. Just, it's not a currency. Right, but if Cash I went to, but if I went to I Latvia could. and I was like, hey, I want to buy this beach house. And I go, I mean, and the guy's like, can you wire me the money? Currency, if I wanted it to be. Like, okay, look at the poker players in, in, in Vegas, right? right? And all the gamblers. If they need bankroll and somebody needs to send them 200000 and they're in the middle of a play, Guess what happens? They I instantly doubt. use crypto. I understand. You know what I mean? That's I'm saying I agree with what the purposes it's being used for. I'm understanding. Right. But it's like it using it as a day to day currency. You don't get it as a value. Doesn't like, make sense because that it's like, shouldn't. I, so you then can, it's you, just an investment opportunity. You can use it. I mean, it's a stock, like you said. Right. Like yeah. Nasdaq. But is, that's why is, it'll never be no, the reason I say you going to the deli and I'm going to buy a pack of gum with Bitcoin because at some point, like he says, there's going to be so little of it in 300 years, right? What are we going to do? Like, what's B the. Bitcoin will be millions of dollars per Bitcoin. Right. It'll be in, in our absurd. lifetimes. Yeah. And so what happens in 300 years? Who knows? It's going to be absurd because it's just math and time. I think that's the what they need to market it as more of an investment opportunity because now you're but telling me. That's the thing. There is no CEO. You. Me. That's why I talk about all for 10 right. years. <laughs> because the way everyone else tells me is like, dude, it's like going to be the new currency. I'm like, no, I'm fine not. with cash yeah. because it stays stable. <laughs> but that's the problem. No, it's that not. You're fine with cash. So are you. You're not I'm using fine Bitcoin to buy, to buy dinner at Malibu and Nobu, right? Well, I'm using Amex. <laughs> right. You're using cash. But Amex is going to get back by Bitcoin sooner or later. No, you're using cash because how dare you spend Fidelity? money of a fluctuating stock item that has potential to grow. No, Why would you I get what you're talking it? about. I get your your perspective on it, but I'm just explaining to you that just like you bought Apple stock and you have, you're not buying coffee with Apple stock, right? Right, but I don't call Apple stock a fucking currency. I just call it a stock. The problem is Bitcoin is just trans cash. That's all it's it is. It's not a currency. It's pretending to be <laughs> currency while, while it's just a fucking stock. Trans cash is crazy. Um, that's it. Um, if you, I can't use it day to day, it's not a currency to me. It's just an investment. I can, I can trade my car for food if I wanted to. That's technically currency. But in the end, it's more of just a fucking thing that I own. Listen, who knows what's going to happen? Don't even years. get me started on NFTs. 
I don't even know that. I that mean, NFTs is, is, me. is a whole different story. But do you think NFTs got an unfair shake because it got boiled down to scams instead of what its original intent yeah. so might have been? The function of NFTs has actually gotten bigger since the scams. So people are using NFTs. Household name corporations are using it for ticketing, for events, for exclusivity. That part's never going to go away. It's only going to get bigger. Problem is when you had that many scam artists come in and every rapper is making three million bucks in one day and a million bucks in one day. And it doesn't matter if you're an influencer or whatever, and you're just making millions of dollars in real quick, and then you don't care what happens. That ruined the concept and the letters of NFT you think of of scam. Yeah, because the value gets diminished completely. And so that part was frustrating because the function of NFT is fascinating. What Gary Vee does with VCon is huge, right? VCon will have 10,000 people, and you can't go without an NFT. That part's interesting to me. When he sold out his sushi restaurant and raised $17 million in four hours, that part's interesting to me. You can't go to the sushi restaurant without the NFT. Those things are interesting from an exclusivity and access perspective. But people selling monkeys and unicorns on a, for you know 10 grand is insane. Right. And, and it's annoying a because those people tarnished of course. An, interest, an interesting concept, right? It is. It's a very it, because it uses blockchain. And blockchain is a, a is the most one of the most intelligent accounting systems we've ever created or ever. And there's no errors. Yeah. It's called a non-fungible token for Correct. a reason. Nothing can happen. There's right. no error. And you can do it for your clothing brand, but Two years ago, it worked great. Now it's like some people will be like, oh, why is he doing that? Yeah, now mm -hmm. I'd be too late to this. Now I'd be, it's yeah. hard to. Blockchain you know, is one of the most interesting festival. things for me, period. I think yeah. it's just I can't insane. believe he's bringing that back, by the way. That's insane. Fire Festival? Maybe, maybe <laughs> NFTs will properly come back. That's how brilliant marketing could be, that you could fuck up so bad with Fire Festival. And go to jail. But the name <laughs> has so much weight that if you bring it back, people might actually they, attend. They might go just for the photo. Would you ever go? Would I go to Five Fashion now? I'm very frustrated because he, what it could have been. He really did do great. He sold out like that. What was the big problem? Well, he did in the Bahamas when there's no infrastructure. And he couldn't realize like... He also promised things that he couldn't come through. And then, and then once he realized that he had millions and millions and millions, I don't know, 16 million, whatever it was, raised, even when he realized he couldn't execute on it, he still let people fly in to... You know, he thought like, he was uh, just like hoping for the best, but that's not how it works. To be fair, it was kind of fun order. and funny to see like people freak like, out. Like Mod privileged Americans live like a third world for like a weekend. You're like, eh, maybe this they should have filmed that, sold that to Netflix, and it would have been a reality show. Like honestly, if it fell apart like that, I would have been like, all right, here's how we're gonna pivot. Imagine he we're said that was just a big prank. <laughs> just fucking around. I mean, that's what I would do, right? <laughs> like, Vitality comes out from the back. He's like, I'm just messing around with you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. But where the, the crazy the thing is, and then nobody could find the money, right? So everyone was like, yo, where the fuck is the money, guy? Uh, like, give the money back and we'll be happy. But yeah. so the like, fact that he's doing it again is actually shocking that they'll allow, allow it because, you know, he didn't pay everybody back. jail. Yeah. This. It's fascinating. And fascinating for sure. <laughs> again, a guy like that, he should go be the number two for. EDC or exactly. for someone. Right, because he know? might have the good ideas, but you need someone who's like, okay, let's... He doesn't know how to go book stages and employees and get insurance and permits. Like, he just doesn't understand events. I throw 42 events a year. That's my life. And so when I see it, I'm like, it sucks because I wanted him to do well. I don't want him to lose. I don't want him to not make that thing. That's, that was cool. I throw a thing every three years called the, the world's largest pizza festival. It's just my excuse to throw this big birthday party and bring a thousand models and influencers here in Beverly Hills really close to where we are right now. The execution of it is really just to show people and have fun with it and make, you know, pizza famous. I just enjoy pizza. It's a fun thing. What he could have done with Fire Festival would have been epic. And he could have done it year after year after year. And instead, he ruined the whole concept of influencer parties. And like people now have that. Fire Festival is just like a four letter word in people's heads. Now. Right. And yeah, it's true. You almost can't throw anything with influencers that involves no. a high ticket. Be, can be like, right. I would love to do it. And I'm not doing it because of him, because of that. Yeah, Man, people ruined NFTs. Yeah, well, you got it. Somebody comes in and always ruins the market. Well, because it's there's always market. someone who's willing to take the risk on scamming for the quick reward, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, well, think about it. If you're like anyone who's got clout on the internet, rapper, whatever, when you're doing the NFT rug pull, in your head, you're like, dude, like, I'm scamming faceless bums who DM me all day, right? Like, they don't have a relationship with their fan base like that, right? No. It's like, why would you not? If someone offers you $3 million to scam a bunch of people that you've never met in your life that are just numbers on a screen, you'll meet a lot of people who are willing to do that. Yeah, it was very frustrating to watch. Right? Because they have it left and right. Yeah. In general, watching people 
fuck the market up always annoys me. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be mm -hmm. fucking, I don't know. Like anything that people just come in and just always fuck the price up. The, I mean, the GameStop thing was fun. That was entertaining. That was, that was But that was like a fight back against the system. Yeah. That was a cool thing, actually. Is that still a thing? Do you have GameStop stock? No. No. Yeah. I mean, a little it bit. It was like GameStop and AMC. That was like. They were pumping a bunch Best of part stuff. of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Did you watch the movie? The uh, GameStop one? No. Yeah. Is no, it good? Yeah, it's, it. it's worth watching, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I gotta Just because it's an entertaining scenario, yeah. I got to watch that. It's like their version of Wolf of Wall Street. See? Now you're going to invest into Bitcoin or are you still going to be uh, stubborn? Because I can come back here every single year and Bitcoin will be higher every single year. Yeah, it's true. This yeah. Is a, here's a great example. If you look at my phone right now, I bought it at $340. Okay? 2014. You look at my phone right now, the same exact account. Scroll to the top. I bought it last week at 68000 200 times more. You're just, yeah. I'm still a buyer. So if I believed in it back then when I was the crazy guy walking around with three heads, why wouldn't I buy it now when it's 68000 When it finally has Because production? I think a lot of people go like, well, when's the ceiling to this? When something has limited supply and ever-growing demand, there is no mathematical right. ceiling. I never really thought about it from the sake of limited supply and the fact that people lose their wallets, people die. But right? you don't get the demand part. That's you don't understand why people want it. I don't understand the demand, but I don't need to understand the demand. Why does someone want a Pokemon card or a Michael yeah, Jordan card? I don't need card? to understand that to be like, I understand. I guess. There, but you did start off by saying you don't get why it's useful. What? The, I, the, I don't. If, but now knowing there's limited quantities, like I can look at a painting by a famous painter and be like, that's gross and ugly. But I know that if it's limited supply, that that's a worthy investment. Right. right? As long as there's demand for it. Right. If there's one last PT cruiser left on Earth, mm -hmm. like that thing's worth five hundred million dollars. Do you no think can mess up the demand for Bitcoin? Nothing. We've been through it. all. Absolutely nothing. There's been right. scams. There's, there's been no billions CEO. of dollars. Of, like billions of dollars have been stolen. So many companies have gone failed. What if China kills our electricity? <laughs> Cash in the walls. But what happens? Yeah. What happens? It really doesn't matter. Because you know, Bitcoin is the only biggest uh, kryptonized electricity. It's the only thing. So the Amish have no crypto. You cut the electricity, baby. That thing doesn't exist. If we go back to the Ukrainian village, right? All your wallets are gone. I'm gonna cut the fucking sea cables, right? Technically, technically, that's the va that's the value electricity. <laughs> so yeah, we but, just yeah, but I didn't know that. But I could write my code down on a napkin, and I could hand you forty six million dollars on a napkin. I just need the code. I don't have to. Right, have but it. I don't know the internet. See, I that's the crazy thing. I would need to imagine stealing gold, like bars of gold, and then you, all you have to do is just to get a USB ledger, and now you're forty six million dollars in. Has anyone threatened to kill you unless you give them your fucking no. crypto wallet? No, I always post with Navy SEALs and <laughs> security guards. Like I don't. You have um, any other crypto that you are a fan of outside of? Yeah, Bitcoin? so I did the very first news article for Ethereum, mm -hmm. 2017. Wow. In do we have? Do we believe in Ethereum? Absolutely. Okay, good. So it was 19... Gas fees are kind of high, though. Yeah, can I can I tell you, though? Everything I touch turns to shit. We had a crypto conversation, so I went and bought two Ethereum this week, and they're already down. You bought two Ethereum this yeah. week? Oh, well, I'm selling I... my Ethereum. <laughs> Dude, I literally... I bought it, and they I'm started selling dropping. it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> this kid. I literally got so... You annoyed. actually bought two yeah. Ethereum? yeah. Oh my God, I'm selling it. So Ethereum is one of, one Done. of them. It's a wrap. Apple stock, Ethereum. What else? What else? What do you need me to short? <laughs> I'm going to buy Apple stock every single month for the rest of my life. See? I buy Apple stock too. They, but the minute I started buying it, dude, garbage. 20 points. We're down 20 <laughs> points, brother. Um, can, it'll, oh, be, it'll be just fine. Can, can <laughs> I, We're going to make it. Can I ask you, so Ethereum, <laughs> anything else that you can give me a little? little... Um, Bitcoin, Ethereum are what I really like. You know, what do you think of us about Solana? Anything outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's gambles to it because it needs a consistent demand and it has to have like a legion of followers that really are passionate about it. Unless it has a function, right? Unless it does something, like it actually is has a use case to it. There are over 10,000 coins now, right? And a lot of them are going to come and go. And a lot of them have function, but nobody knows enough. And so can you make a ton of money with grabbing another coin? Of course you can. And some like Solana are still worth billions and billions, billions of dollars, if not tens of billions of dollars. I just, from a fundamental perspective, I know without a shadow of a doubt that math and time compounds and Bitcoin will win every single year for the rest of my life and after I'm gone. And so to me, why, when I know Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to win year after year, and both of them are up 200 times when I got into them, why would I care about anything else? Right. Even if they could do better theoretically, why would I gamble? If I know Apple is going to crush it year after year for the rest of my life, could I go invest into other phone companies? Sure. There's new phone companies coming out all the time. 
why would I gamble on them? Those are the, those are the people that you're the want that, right? I'll get it at five dollars and hopefully right. I can become a millionaire in a month. But you're for the long haul. If you had twenty grand cash to invest in one thing, uh, wh- where would you put it right now? Like if I hand you twenty racks and you're like, where are you, where are you gonna shove it? I would like to buy something in real estate. Like I'd like to buy a piece of real estate. I'm not gonna be able to get the whole. Right. Thing, but I'd rather buy is that the best same. is that the best our return investment or yeah. like I mean, you shouldn't run and buy Bitcoin mathematically Bitcoin can and will win theoretically right, right. but there's gonna be a flawed fluctuation over the course of time you buy 20 grand portion of a fourplex in Beverly Hills I mean you win right when our, our parents first moved here it was 400k now it's 800k now it's 1.2 million and it's 1.6 then it's 2 million because of supply and demand also easier to leverage right the, the, yes you can the, always have access to correct. capital right but to me, when you think about household name cities, how limited the supply is versus how many millions of people want to move to Beverly Hills or New York or Miami or, you know, household name cities, there's such, there's only a little bit of dirt left. You know, there's only a little bit of oceanfront property in Malibu. So if I own 20 grand of a piece of property in Malibu, that a shack in Malibu is $4 million. Well, it wasn't always $4 million. Right. It was 200K and 300K and 400K. And that 4 million will be 10 million later because there's no more oceanfront property in Malibu. And so everyone that wants to go there one day has to go through that. And yep. so to me, that part, plus the fact that we're at 8 billion people now, we're going to have tens of billions of people later simply because people are dying slower and longer. And so from a math perspective, to me, the demand's going up because people are living longer and the supply isn't growing very gets much. It's smaller. Where but, else are you going to build in Malibu? But the reproduction gets a little slower though. Right now, we, we're not making a lot of babies. We're not making enough babies currently, but that math will change because enough babies even if a lower percentage still makes more babies if that makes sense yeah meaning going from 8 billion to 9 billion 9 billion jumps to 11 because of just math it just compounds correct even though it's our percentages are down we're not even though it's not flying through the roof we're correct. still it's still yeah because marriage is different now uh how the household is different now yeah no one wants kids i don't do you want do you have kids not yet do you want them soon you have you're in a relationship right now uh, we just got divorced oh okay so wait you want kids soon but you know do you you don't have it's a, a you, you, have, you haven't picked a vagina yet. You don't ever want kids? I like kids in the same way you like attending someone's else's boat or private plane, right? Like you I like, other like kids, kids <laughs> and hanging with them if there's someone else's, but I don't does your, wanna does, like does your girl own them. want kids? And no, we talk about it, but like you know what helps not f- school shootings. School shootings help calm the uh desire. To want I would kids. never put my kid in public school. So right, but I grew up in public school, and you were so like, I, it was fun, and it was like part of <laughs> it what, was fun. It was, times. it was a good upbringing. Now you're like, people are homeschooling their kids. You're like, damn, I'm just like, this kid needs yeah, to I, experience the world too. Yeah, I, I wanna, don't know. I want to build a school. School. You're gonna build your own school mm-hmm. for your kid, not just for my kid, but for local kids. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 good. My like, imaginary kid. I don't have a kid yet, but I'm gonna have a kid at some point. Some point soon. Yeah, the schools that we have nowadays are outdated the way they teach the kids anyway, so. Absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you, like, did I really learn much in school either? Like, I learned math. Did you? Can yeah. I, if I brought your math book right now, do you think you could pass your junior high school test right now? Mm. I'll bet you a thousand push-ups you can't do it. My yeah, thousand I push-ups a, versus your I had push-ups. A, I was taking uh, <laughs> calculus exactly. two in high school. Yeah, I was yeah. a math nerd. Mm-hmm. Aren't math nerd. I probably don't remember, can't do matrices. That's probably the only thing. I'm, I'm obsessed with math and I have no chance of passing a calculus test. Right we now. should try. Oh, not I a calculus. Absolutely. No way. I don't know if I can pass algebra right now. No way. They also teach it differently, I heard. Like, no way. I can't. Arithmetic and all that shit. But I was I, obsessed. I had to have an A plus, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't think I can have a can't. chance. No shot. Yeah. So, like, were we really learning anything? I went <laughs> were to, schools that good back then either? I went through four years of Spanish and I didn't. Right. I know 30 words. <laughs> So all they're doing is just adding some trans shit these days. That's it. <laughs> they were just as bad before. I can't. I, I wouldn't be able to do anything school-wise right now. It's tough. It's it's interesting to hear you talk about these topics in simplicity, though, which is good. It like means you know way well too calm. enough. You also, it's because you also know the subject well <laughs> enough where you don't have to um, use complicated ways of explaining it. You also talk for a living at these conferences to, like, you know, people who need to be able to... I immerse, comprehended. I immerse myself like in, the, in a category. So if I'm going to talk about something, it's because I immerse myself in it. If I don't know it, I say that. Most times people try to pretend like they know everything. I know about real estate, but I couldn't walk you through real estate. But Bitcoin, I lived and breathed it for years. So I can talk you through details. 
I know about energy drinks, but I can't tell you how the formula was made. So I'm not going to tell you that part. Right. So the things that I know about, I speak calmly because I, expertise leads to calmness. So like, if I asked you to go speak about clothing on stage, you could talk about it all day. Right. But if I said, hey, can you go teach us how to make tequila from scratch? Like, well, like, yeah. <laughs> you're, right. you're deer in headlights, right? You wouldn't know what to say of like how to do it. So I immerse myself into categories that I'm interested in and the things that I don't, I don't try to pretend like I know them. I think that's the problem. Most people pretend to know everything. Yes. But the problem is pretending. Especially, the internet especially is the way in LA. That's, that's, and the internet's the <laughs> yeah. way it is for that reason. Everyone's a fucking expert. Yeah. Problem is pretending and not having any action behind it, though. That's the issue with right. our world. Everybody wants to have a quote up on their story, but actually have absolutely zero action involved. Think about how many people you follow posted. are political experts. Right. And people have business N cards and no business. They have N they're NFT experts. And they're political experts. Then when there's Russia versus Ukraine, they know everything about geopolitics. <laughs> and then yeah. every week they're an expert about anything that happens. I think we should I think we should have some kind of license for opinions. <laughs> yeah. If you believe in astrology, <laughs> like, you're like, not allowed to talk. Like you need to have a license to have opinions. Like uh, if you need to go through what a series what are the requirements. What would you I need can't to tell you. I don't know, but I just I don't know how to problem solve that. But oh. we definitely need, need I would just to like to I would just like them to pass that basic test. Yes. We need yeah. some kind of Three level mm -hmm. tests where you're basic, you're uh, mid tier, yes. and then high tier of opinions, and we need to be able to. And I think your social security number should be attached to your comments. Hundred percent. I think you China's would, already doing it. I think <laughs> I'm, I talk about yes, this all is. the time. I believe in zero privacy. Hundred percent zero privacy. I want to know all your secrets so that when you come at me, you have to mm -hmm. understand that I also know you. I don't faults. think you really believe that. I or do understand 100%. what that means. I have nothing to hide. Ooh, wow, Karel likes weird <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, but oh, so how about okay? So how about when you're doing your fake stunts for April Fools? You no, wouldn't no, want somebody no, to no, know no, about no, that. No, 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 not zero privacy. Like, look, someone comes up to me and goes, Karel, you're like you're a, a fucking, you're a homophobic, misogynistic piece of shit, right? And I can defend that with X, Y, Z. But I don't know your life story because I'm public, you're not. But if I can see, hey, guess what? You are blackface in fucking high school pretending to be little john like i got you back i see your dirty laundry just because i'm putting mine out to the world like i want to be able to see i want to see your but like dan says support. we all we're, we all have something that bothers us or something opinion that might not be well off with a general public or whatever it may be which is fine but the issue is is that we're living in a society where people are kind of just building a following off of lost souls you know it's like more lost souls following lost souls and then it's like and then you're like oh well that's your opinion right and then it becomes kind of like everything becomes valueless it's right? like what are we so who like where are we going <laughs> what's the direction like who's right who's wrong who's left i just try to sell t-shirts to <laughs> it becomes confusing right sometimes i'm just like on twitter i'm like oh, okay that kind of sounds mm, but that's uh, yeah i don't know and you just kind of i mean that's how you form a right that's you're just collecting as much about something as possible but you just don't know what's true or, or isn't on the internet. Well, anymore. we think about what we learned about the media now compared to how bad it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Like, holy shit. We grew up on the food pyramid. True. <laughs> like there was a food pyramid on our wall. Right. True. Like, it was just bought no, off by yeah. companies. We thought that cereal was like the healthy breakfast to have every morning. Yeah. That's why, you know, our parents, when they had no phones and they come from like Latvia, mm -hmm. Russia, yeah. Ukraine, whatever it may be. And they're like, don't listen to the people. People mm -hmm. suck. And they have this like crazy, like almost like voodoo like yeah. commentary when it comes to people scumming you over. Yeah. But then if you think about it, when they found out they got betrayed, it hurt 10 times more because they thought that they were following like a certain yeah. righteous path. But now we're living in a world where everyone's playing the game. You're like, oh, that kid's fucking me, but I know it's okay. Let me just keep going. They didn't do that. Who? They were our parents. They were like, oh, that guy is no good. I won't even speak to him. Right. Us, we're like, oh, that guy's no good. Let me go. Let me well, go. Because let me go see how I can make some money. Yeah, it's everyone's just hustling, right? <laughs> you know, it's just different. It's just a different. Well, yes, technology and times, and it's just so much easier to just. It's just weird, but yeah, you're right. It's I, I guess the propaganda hit harder back then. Mm -hmm. You sell your t-shirts in the retail stores or only online? No, we're literally about to start. I was just thinking about that. I was also going to talk to you. <laughs> You're probably going to get bombarded by people like, I want to go work for him for 5% of gross sales. That's great. Like, Fuck. <laughs> Dan, what the hell did you just say? Yeah, Dan, you got to give him, hit him with a, you know. So just e e email Kirill at assholeslifeforever.com. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, guys, if anybody wants a job. Are you hiring? <laughs> yes. Are you? Oh, what's the worst business idea you've had pitched to? 
Oh my God. <laughs> I get 400 a year. 400 business plans a year. I get thousands of pitches. Uh, How many has someone cold pitched you? Out of the blue, not through a connection. Yeah. You went, love it. Let's do it. There was a girl on Clubhouse. And I didn't know who she was. And Clubhouse was a thing during the shutdown. And she was like, I won all these awards for speaking. And I won five grand, 10 grand, 25 grand, 10 grand. Like she just had all these awards. So while she was talking, I went and looked her up on Instagram, looked around Facebook and Google. I started searching and she's pitching me, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, a lot of interesting characters that were, were all like hosting like a pitch off. And it's like one in the morning. And I just remember like searching this girl and I said, I'll invest in you. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to wire you the money tomorrow. And I was like, I never do that. I always have my due diligence and my lawyers and my accounting, my this and my that. You send me investment documents tomorrow. I'll wire you the money tomorrow. She did. And I still talk to her all the time. I talked to her this morning. And she's just out there. She just got like 500K from Google. Like she's out there just crushing it. And she just speaks at events, teaching about how she helps kids. Her whole thing's about children. Wow. And like, that's one of the rare, rare, rare moments. Right. I did, I did the same one for Dollar Beard Club. The monthly box for oh, beards wow. with Bozerian. That one was, I just knew it was going to work because Dollar Shave Club had such compelling commercials. Right. Dollar Beard Club, which they ultimately sued us and won, obviously. Um, <laughs> which is okay. We had a good run. That's um, part of business. Dollar Beard Club was like, I'm in, right? I was the first check in. We put 150K in, helped them with the initial marketing and then 77,000 monthly members because it was just like a good, fun, like. Right, you tapped into mm-hmm. masculine energy, mm-hmm. right? Beard. Here, you'll actually enjoy this. Guess how our an opening campaign on day one was. We had 100 female pages, makeup pages, gossip pages post about Dollar Beard Club. Not a single male related page. It was wow. all, all girls. Because they listen, because they follow the girls. Well, right? because the guys influenced, the, I mean, the girls influenced the, the guys. The meaning, girls yeah. were tagging all their friends that have boyfriends with beards, moms that have boyfriends with beards, or husbands with beards. Yep. They're buying it for their grandfathers, their boyfriends, their whatever, everything. So I went only after women for that opening day. And it was all makeup pages, all beauty pages. Girls, kid, youngins, and gays are the best consumers. Yeah, because gay, gays and none, don't And none of those kids. three categories have beards. Really think about it. Well, sometimes. sometimes. They are the best consumers. And the girls who really, even me, when, with the barbershop in New York, girls bring their boyfriends. They're like, I want you to look good. This mm-hmm. is the spot I want to Well, take. yeah, if my girlfriend tells me, like, this will make me want to suck your dick more, I'll be like, what do I, right. sure, We're let's the, go. Sign up for the year. Yeah, yeah it's a very exactly. smart, very smart, very <laughs> smart move. <laughs> so basically, don't pitch Dan. Because two ideas over a career of building brands. I, I, I hear, uh, on average, three to 400 pitches or business plans per year. And I invest in 12 to 18 per year. Do you think? Uh, wow. Wow. I do around one a month on average. Really? The last two years, we raised $44 million at three to six million dollars per company, averaging between four to eight weeks at a time. I'm just going to text you once a month. Like, Kirill, idea number 73. Oh, Damn, you're no joke. Damn. Bro. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. But that's, why, machine. But that's why I build in public because all these people talk about stuff and I want to show them how they can do it. Like, here's how you can do an education company, a clothing brand a beverage, right. a poker site, whatever you want, events. I show all the behind the scenes. It's called building in public. I show everything. Right. It's like a kitchen. The good, with the bad. See through windows. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's like a reality show. People want to get invested in yeah. the process, right? Like when you're watching somebody cook on TV, the reveal is five seconds, right? Mm-hmm. The buildup for mm-hmm. baking a cake is what you're watching. Yes. So that's why I always tell you. I'm like, show them the process. Exactly. When you show at the warehouse, that's what I'm watching the most. Right, right. When you're in Mexico, I'm like... That's more interesting yeah. than like, guys, look yeah. at this. We I just know. got a house. And you're like, yeah, okay, that, that's not interesting. No, they want to know how you got the house. Exactly. And what you do in the house. That's what they want to know. That's why reality TV does so well. People yeah. want to see behind the scenes. Yeah, people want to see behind the, the scenes. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. When you think about the commercials for all the reality shows, it's always like the dun, 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 right? right? The bad part, the drama part. And so when you're like, oh, this happened at our warehouse in Mexico, or this happened here, this happened... Oh, I, I missed my flight. Like those right. are those are relatable things. Right. You saying I got a hundred million dollars. That's not relatable. To yeah. Anybody. Someone's like, cool. No. Now you have a Porsche. I hate you. Right. Yeah. They want to see it in there. You're like, oh, shit, I could do that. Mm-hmm. I could try that. That looks interesting. You pouring out a hundred thousand. That's why table. you're successful. And you're not a dick. You yeah. Going. I hope you're the man for sure. Dan, is there anything you want to plug? Any investments you've made? Any companies you're building? Anything you're working on that you care to tell the world about? My charities, Model Citizen Fund. Ooh, okay. It's been 11 years on that. We got the world's largest toy drive for the 11th year coming up this December. Is it hard to start a charity? Yeah. 
I know. I wanted to start one. It's really, yeah, it really takes about hard. six months to do a 501c3. If you have a good accountant, it's fine. Um, the main thing for a charity is just having a very specific cause and effect. Like, what do you want to raise money for and why? Too many of them are like ambiguous. You're just like, oh, no, that's what, that's what I, money I originally there. was going to do that, <laughs> yeah. but we were too ambiguous because I was like, the perfect charity name is Assholes Give Forever. <laughs> that's so right? good. So I want, so good. I wanted, that's what we're going to do, but it's like, <laughs> that's uh, really good. Just make it a monthly subscription and people give you five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever a month. Just donate forever. to my gas fund. Yeah. Um, to battle inflation, guys. We got the, the Wild Jungle is fun. We got with the real Tarzan. Dude, I want to go to that place Please, so bad. Whatever. Hey. So bad. Anytime you want. Even if I'm not there. Have you ever been cool. attacked by an animal there? Yeah, of course. We have a Spire Tour. All the you know, Spire Tours fun. Those are the big business conferences. They're, right. We make them cheap. It's 100 bucks to 500 bucks, 300 bucks type of tickets. Dude, you get to see I want to buy one of those. Yeah. They're really fun. It's at Lake Convention Center next weekend. Really? Yeah. Fuck, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to be here next I'm week. I'm here. Damn. I'm going to be in New York. We got Magic Johnson, Lewis Howes. That'd be a fun one. We got an all women's conference for free. Wow. Elevator nights. That's the 54th why? time. Why? Because they get paid less? It's Is that why it's free? <laughs> they definitely don't get paid less. <laughs> I just don't know why. Well, the women's, it's not a nightclub, yeah. Dan. Yeah, the women, women get in free. No, not anymore. Yeah, the, the women speakers get paid because <laughs> uh, there's just not as many great business speakers in the women category because they're busy or they have families and it's hard to, it's hard to convince them. Uh, to come speak, especially on tour. Do you notice a lot of sexism in entrepreneur world? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Of course. And if I ever put out a flyer and there's not a women on it, you get ripped to shreds. Right. Because the word are they mm -hmm. like, well, where are they? Yeah. But well, I was this a sandwich making conference. Yeah. Right. But People get real. I'm, I want to book them, but I'm not trying to do it to book a hit a quota. I'm booking them because I want these people's I, minds, I, right? I want, yeah, I want Jamie Lima and Cody Sanchez and Sarah Blake. I want them, but they're expensive and they're busy. It's not that easy to did, book. Did, right. did you ever at any point think like, oh man, I really want to get Elizabeth Holmes before would, she booked? I would still interview her. That is a, no, now, now she's super interesting to interview. So interesting. But like, you know who she was? Elizabeth Holmes, that the th fucking... Theranos, or what do you call it? Yeah, Theranos. Yeah. That, she was the Elon Musk chick who's like, yo, with a blood test, we can fix every disease in your body eventually. No, I don't and then she her. went to jail because she basically scammed... She did scam everybody. Everybody. Scammed everybody. But it was like literally... Sequoia. Like she, yeah. she scammed like household name VCs. Wow. Because yeah, the contraption didn't work. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, just a drop of blood, everyone in your home, yeah. you'll be able to see what's wrong with your fucking yeah, entire everything. body and life history, yeah. and we'll be able to come up with ways to this bitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember her pictures. Just look at her eyes. Dude, I posted her like seven, eight years <laughs> yeah, ago. Look at her eyes for sure. Yeah. yeah. She's I posted her like eight years ago being like, guys, like I never like support like strong women, but I'm just posting this lady out here. Look at what she's doing. Da, da, da. <laughs> I, I, was, I was like the one time I try to co-sign a fucking chick and she goes. You got like, sold. Yeah. Well, it was a great concept. you don't get sold. No, but I would have believed in something like that. It was a great Wouldn't concept. You? Great concept. Yeah. I'm sure it'll happen at some Good point. Good intentions. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. I don't know that. I think that she tried. That's the, well, that's the fucked up part, right? It's right. not like she was disingenuous in the attempt. I think she just was like, oh, yeah, it's like I think people get having too a deep. flying car. You're like, yeah, I know you're attempting to do it, but like you're out of your mind if it's going to happen. I think crazy entrepreneurs sometimes get too deep, like the fire Festival guy. I think he was too deep and he didn't just say, hey, let's move it somewhere else. Or it's let's, embarrassing. Yeah, let's just move it to Miami and let's throw the party here because Bahamas sucks for this situation because there's no infrastructure. Bahamas is a beautiful place, but it's dirt and sand. There is no way to have tens of thousands of influencers running around. They don't have enough hotel rooms. It was never going to work. And some same thing with her. Like she was probably like, shoot, I raised hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm just going to try to figure it out. And I'm going to make a fake box for now and buy myself more time. Who knows? I just think a lot of times entrepreneurs get too deep and they don't just rip the bandaid off and stop. And there's way too many business owners that should stop sooner. Right. That's why I think a lot of times it's, hard it's to not cut even about money. Sometimes, you know, you got to really just have that emotional cutoff. They're like, why isn't anybody coming to my restaurant? Or why isn't anybody buying, buying my microphones well, or my shirts? It's an like, ego thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like pride. It's like, how can this not work? Like, I want this to work so bad. What That's why it's to important do? to fail as much as possible so you get used to that feeling. Mm -hmm. That's why games like dodgeball Absolutely. and like bullying in school i'm sorry Dodgeball's i know everyone's good against enough, it good enough because no it has i just to be mean something like, that's long i just mean like when you grow up in schools we were taught failure like you yes. failed classes yeah. you got detention you didn't get you participation trophy. there was a cause and effect for every mm -hmm. every action had a reaction yeah. right now it's like from participation trophies right. to like and no more bullying it's like dude some bullying is good and also like look they're like, oh, you know, bullying, like, what if a kid kills themselves? I'm like, we don't care when they get shot in that school, right? So, like, it's like, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet, right? You want tougher kids and tougher people 
to be able to overcome failure. Well, it's going to happen in the workplace too. You. So if you don't learn about it, it's not easy in the workplace either. It's not easy being an adult. There's people going to bully you as an adult. And just the, different types of bullying. That's why no one's employable right now. Everyone's just, a, you're like, oh my God, if I hire this person, it's going to be more of a headache than in like an addition to this brand because they're just going to fucking. I do have a question. Yeah. So I may act like I know a lot of stuff. I have no idea how people are surviving right now. Me neither. Financially? Yeah. Me neither. How is you do, a good point. How do you I have get, that question too. It's so expensive for just normal life stuff. And when people not working, I don't understand it. I don't either. I, re, I, I think it's a lot of debt, I consider right? myself making decent money. And I look around sometimes and I'm like, I'm like, all right, went to get Chipotle, went to get coffee, went to get this, went to get that membership here, membership right. there, blah, blah, blah. You start, a day, you're you start like, yeah, you're <laughs> like, you, as soon as you come out of the house, you get clipped for $200. Yeah, and you're you're like, who's making $200 a day? No, yeah, but six, you're forgetting grand that, a month. That's, the, the, yeah, but we're also living cash, in a different right? bubble. Everything you just named. So I live on Reddit and I follow like all the subreddits and, you know, I hang out in like the fucking peasant ones too. And it's just like, dude, what you just listed is all one percenters things like my parents who yes have no. money don't go to Chipotle. Most people make their own food. It's more expensive to eat at work out. That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You buying produce to build that burrito is going to cost you 10 Bre times more. Bread is five well, bucks you're not going to have a burrito. You're not going to have that. I'm just going to eat. I'm ramen. just saying right in reference to what people say, like, oh, save money, eat at home. Trust me, I go to Costco. I try to I try to cook for myself. It's still just I'm as expensive. With you. You're probably two dollars off. R raspberries are six dollars now. But you're wasting more time at home rather than instantly, let's say, getting a, a cooked meal, right? So, so then, what do you think happens? I don't know. Imagine having three kids and 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 how? Paying, how? And then you well, don't have time, right? Because no, you have three kids. You make, like that's you your own fault. You got to make ten grand a month to get by, and I don't like nobody makes ten grand a month. It's like a very tiny percentage. And then don't forget this, dude. You, this is one of the only countries that like, God forbid, you're not healthy, right? Like if you break your Correct. arm mm -hmm. or break your leg, like you get hit with a $5,000 hospital bill. Like but They want you to not be healthy. Like the way the system is built, it's kind of like, oh, it's actually, it's, okay. it's kind of not bad if you're not so healthy. So do you, you know? think the problem is everything we just discussed boils down to that is the fact that capitalism is wired to squeeze the most amount of money out of a society, right? And there's no room for empathy in a capitalistic society, right? Because everyone just think, wants more money and return on their investment. Think about how many times the same hundred dollars is taxed. <laughs> Dude, that but, bothers me. Oh, I can't even. How, when so you say much. That, you, I just can't even. How, think. how do I pay thirty-four to forty-three percent tax on that hundred dollars that I make? And then I go to the restaurant, I pay tax there, and then the waiter that I tip, he pays taxes. The restaurant pays taxes. The food manufacturer that shipped the food over to there pays taxes. The truck driver that brought the food over there pays taxes. And we still have fucking potholes. And we still we have, have so much money. And this country say. is a dump. Yes. Yeah, but the issue is, is like, <laughs> I don't even write. Let's say somebody gets hungry and they're on their way to work and they work eight to 10 hours and they need to stop by just at a gas station to get a few snacks. You're getting hit with 25 bucks for just mm -hmm. getting some snacks. Mm -hmm. How? Who's, who's spending 25 and you have to fill up another 80 to a hundred dollars for gas. You just got hit for $120 just for that day. And that's without you even thinking remotely about for whatever, what's going on, right? Car. Laundry, something, whatever. If something goes wrong, you need to fix a bulb or I don't know, right? Anything miscellaneous. It just, it just boggles my mind. Cause like he says, I literally walk around people to, and I'm just like, how are people? I'll tell alive? you the most profitable thing people do. I read in that subreddit, donate blood. Donate plasma pays really well. I'm not even joking you. These people are like, I make 12 grand a year donating. Blood. Really? Yeah. Because you can donate, I think, two times a month. Whoa, that's and a they lot. pay like a a $500 a session. That's a lot. That's impressive. Yeah, they said donating. And if you have like rare blood, you can make some more bank. And that's the crazy part of our society is that people are donating blood, not out of the kindness of their own heart. But to, to pay survive, bills. Survive, yeah. With us saying how hard it is to pay for everything, we do live in the in the times where it's easiest to make money. Never easier in history of the world. Yeah. Right. Because if you can't afford those snacks at a gas station, you can blow I, some trucker in that gas station. So I can't really <laughs> feel bad for you if you're not if you can't afford it because I'm like, yo, there's so many ways you can make money. You're just lazy. I was gonna almost say the same thing, but <laughs> fifteen year olds I know are making ten grand a month. Yes. Literally just editing videos for hundred bucks, two hundred bucks a video. Correct. In their apartment. There's a there's a five year old unboxing toys making thirty million a year. <laughs> Seriously. <on YouTube>. Okay. <laughs> Nah, but, but like literally I could go be a, a dog walker and like 14 years old or 18 years old and make freaking 200 bucks a day 
Welcome dogs. <laughs> Correct. You can play video games now and make money. For sure. I think people are just limited. I think uh, a lot of people are not creative. And there's so much more creative ways to make money now. And the old ways might not be as profitable. And a lot of people have a hard time of taking, breaking from tradition, right? Can I tell you my, one of my craziest investments? Yes. So two years ago, me and a guy named Adam Weitzman we put a million dollars into buying Metaverse land in a game called oh, yeah. BigTime.gg. People all over the world are making money playing inside of Big Time. They're just playing from wherever they're in the world, third world countries, playing inside the game, making 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks a day, which again, you live in a third world country, you're a millionaire, right? right? You're crushing it. And all they're doing is, and I see it every day because my emails, that's annoying. I get 200 emails a day of them renting our properties in the metaverse. Okay. I know this is confusing because you hate this. Yeah, I do, I mean, you're literally, yes. You're <laughs> describing a dream to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> our million dollar investment is already paid off and averaging 200,000 a month and growing of people playing a game in third world countries, renting our apartments and renting our buildings inside of the virtual land to then make themselves 20, 30, 40 bucks a day, getting swords and daggers and like all the things you can do inside this game. It's crazy. You can be in a third world country right now, whether you're playing in big time or another metaverse game and make more money than your entire family's legacy. Right. That's nuts. People do that with Minecraft. They do it with all these games. So just, I think you just got to be a hustler. That's yeah. the thing. You got to be, if there's a, you can find a hustle with anything. Could you imagine if we were 15 with phones? Dangerous. Oh my God. I can't. I'd be a trillionaire. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't but imagine. Like, but like developed how it is now. I, I had mean, a right psychic, now. but I couldn't yeah. do anything with it. If I was 15 right now, yes. I would make more money than Correct. I do right now. Right. I tried to start a porn site when I was 16 <laughs> from a basement by getting girls from uh, Yahoo's Classifieds 2000s. Crazy. Tried to run my own <laughs> I, I did never heard of this one before. Yeah, you know, classifieds two thousands. It was great. It was the original way to like you would just look up people's like classifieds. I'm assuming they were all hookers, obviously at right. the time. But there'd be hot girls, and me and my friend Ben would email these girls. Um, and this was the beginning of the summer, and we're like, "Hey, we're starting like a porn site. Like, you should submit content." And all these girls were like, "Oh yeah, no problem." And this is like when you had like one computer in the house. We did it at the beginning of the summer, and then you know the fucking immigrant story. In the summers, you get shipped away to, like, the Poconos or the Catskills to go on, like, vacation. And I got shipped away for two months with no internet, and Surprise our porn you site fell apart. your house raided. <laughs> you couldn't do it back then. You couldn't do it back then. Videos. Just, I was just a horny kid. Just, can you imagine if I had an iPhone at 16? No. Bruh. My God. No. Great. I think a lot of time. I'd be way worse than, like, the Logan Pauls with the Suicide Forest shit, like, yeah, crazy. I think that's the biggest. That's that's the problem. Is everything from news to everything in this world is chasing the high of attention, right? The news do it for clicks, and we do it for you know. You don't even regard some people as people. You just regard them as objects sometimes, and it does come out shitty. But like, it just sucks to see how many humans have voids for attention. And that's what this yeah. what every yeah. podcast is, right? Right. No I mean, technically, I, I'm a victim of it as well. Right? I grew up only, on that as well. So, yeah. I mean, this will only do well in clips, right? Clips are king, right? Unless, you know, you're the Joe Rogans at the top, you know, where it's like people are paying attention for a full two hours. But, you know. No, for Dan, they're going to sit around. Yeah. Well, I just mean from the <laughs> sake of the Internet is. ADD. Yeah. Crazy. Well, on that note, guys, listen. That don't was the longest plug ever. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, don't, don't procrastinate. Start making money. Okay? Bill's got to get paid. <laughs> and save some money. Dan said at least a Make year. Make enough money that it's not a necessity like Dan. Correct. Don't let it trap you. And don't start a business. Work for somebody first. Yes. Get some yes. capital and then start leave it Leave Dan alone. Yes. <laughs> He's All very right. exhausted. Go, go email Kirill at... <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. This, this was amazing, Dan. Thank Boom. you. Just hit it, break it, whatever. Yeah. It's very strong. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, dude.